Hello everyone, I'm back, and today we are going to talk about Deathwatch. What do you have to know about Deathwatch? Deathwatch is a special space marine organization that are working with the Inquisition, or those Xenos especially. So, some kind of alien hunters and, and exterminators. The Deathwatch is not a specific chapter, it's something like army or a group of space marines, but they are came from many different chapters. Some of them are here because they are really good and get chosen to serve at the Death Watch. While the others, maybe they have committed some kind of crime or they left their chapters and many things like that, they can also join the Death Watch and their sins got absolved, but they are somewhere on the lower end of the hierarchy of the Death Watch. Okay, but this is not a lore video. Let's check out what makes the Death Watch so special. While the Death Watch got access to the most of the Space Marine units, and it has no special doctrine, but they have incredible tactical flexibility. Because of two things. One of them is the easier, they have special rounds for the special issue bolters. One of them makes you ignore cover, one of them gives one to your wound rolls, one of them gives to the armor penetration and the range, and there is one that gives you another damage to your bolters. So really tactically flexible. The other cool thing that they have is called mixed units. And it gives you the ability to mix units, mostly categorized by their armor, or if they are firstborn, then you can mix them almost every way you want, like Terminator or a bike in a group of tactical marines, or things like that. You can also put jump pack units into the squad and that model, but only that model has the fly keyword. So it's a really great flexible tool, but some of the abilities, like turbo boost on a motorbike, can only be used by a unit if all of them on a motorbike. Other than this, there's also the primary skill teams, when you can make really great mix and match, like you have 5 intercessors and put 5 bikers or 5 hellblasters into the squad, and then you have a half heavy weapon team, hellblasters, protected by the intercessors, so if they get shot, you pick up the intercessors and you still have the hellblasters. Or if you have 5 intercessors and 5 outriders, the outriders have toughness 5, while the intercessors has toughness 4. While there is the same number of models with toughness 5 and toughness 4 in the squad, you decide the toughness of the squad. So in this case you have a somewhat faster but much more tough unit in your army. How good is this mix and match? Well, in some cases it's really bad, but in some cases it is amazing. If you want a more in-depth analysis on this, just ask and I will make a video on it. And one last thing about this mix and match units. These mixed units, called kill teams, and when you make a mixed unit, you are also able to purchase an upgrade. All of them do the same effect, but on different enemy. What is the effect? You can reroll wound rolls of one, so it's something like uh, if you would stay next to a lieutenant. The difference is what you can make this reroll against. Well, there is something against flyer and fast attack, something against troops, something against HQ units, so almost like headhunters for characters. So almost against everything you have this, but you can only purchase it once. On that I mean, you can purchase every six of them, but every one can be only purchased once. But now, let's check out the Combat Patrol Death Watch. Price? $150 or 120 euros or 90 pounds. When you inside the kit? Well, it's around 183 euros, if you plan to use the Death Watch upgrades through. Well, if you don't, it's only a little above 150 euros. Points inside the kit, 405 or 435 points, depending on if you buy the upgrade for the apothecary. But let's check out the HQ option first. Primary is Lieutenant with Power Sword and Bolt Pistol. One model, 65 points. The Lieutenant's mostly a support character, for a really cheap price, they are okay in melee and they can be somewhat good at shooting, but they are better in melee. In this case, he has a sword and a bolt pistol, so it makes him absolutely a melee character and not a shooting one. He can surprise your enemy in melee and dish out some damage, but he will die really easily because he lacks the invulnerable saves. You can upgrade this character greatly if you can somehow give him an invulnerable save, like an armor indomitus or an artificer armor or something like that. But without it, he is really squishy. And I rather count him as an emotional support character instead of a support character. But if he gets the invulnerable saves, I think he is a really, really good deal for that price. In that watch, which is mostly a shooting army, I think you should use him as a support character, who is standing near to your interceptors or any of your shooting units with the core keyword, to give them the real wound rolls of one. 
and if the enemy gets too close, he can either heroically intervene and help out his battle brothers in melee, or, if you have a turn, then he can go and charge them head on. I like this lieutenant better than his Phobos brethren, because he is cheaper and you can give him different weapon options. I would give him a 6 out of 10 without invulnerable saves, but if you can give him an invulnerable save, I would give him a 7 out of 10. You probably have better options, but if you are low on points, he can still be a great upgrade for your army. Primaris Intercessors 10 models, 180 points. They are the most basic of the basic units of the Space Marines, but they are great, and even better for Death Watch, because they are the basis many of the cool kill teams. The kill team that they are a part of is called 40 skill team, where you have to put in 5 intercessors, one of them has to be the sergeant, the leader of the kill team, and after that you are able to put in assault intercessors, outriders, hellblasters, or more intercessors. But I think the best you can do is either outriders or hellblasters next to the intercessors. About the intercessors, I said they are basic, but they have access to three types of different guns, and an additional grenade launcher, and a cool melee weapon or pistol for the sergeant, or both. But then he loses his main weapon, so you have to decide if it's worth it for you. The three types of different guns. Autobolter, it has a normal range of 24. Three shots, zero armor penetration, but it is assault, so you can shoot it after running. Bolt rifle, it has a longer range of 30. One point of armor penetration, and it is rapid fire one. So if you are not moving, or you are within half range, you can shoot it twice. And the last one, Stalker Pattern Bolter, it has the longest range of 36, it has a damage 2 and 2 points of armor penetration, but it's heavy. So if you are moving, you're hitting worse. Granted the best options, probably the auto bolter or the bolt rifle. I mentioned the additional grenade launcher. For every 5 model, you can add the grenade launcher into the team. It is Assault 1, with 30 inch range. The same grenade profiles as the normal grenades, but it has longer range and it counts as Assault 1, so you can shoot it even after running. Why is it cool that this is Assault? Well, because every unit can throw one grenade, which is type grenade. But in this case, this one is Assault, so you can use two grenades, not just one, if this is necessary. And other than that, it's a free extra shot, or many shots if you use frag grenade. The next most important thing about the intercessors. The sergeant can have a cool melee weapon or a pistol, or both. But I think it's wise to give him a melee weapon. Your best options currently. The chainsword, because it gives you an armor penetration and an extra attack. Or power sword, because it gives you better strength, 3 points of armor penetration, and that's it. Or you also have access to heavier melee weapons, power fist or thunder hammer. They are unwieldy, so you have to subtract one from your hit rolls but they give you great strength, good armor penetration and good damage. The difference between them, while the Power Fist has 3 points of armor penetration and damage 2, then Thunder Hammer gives you 2 points of armor penetration but damage 3. If you're picking about these two, I think the Thunder Hammer is better right now. That's it for them. I would give them a 7 out of 10. Let's check out the elite character, Primary Apothecary. He is one model, 70 points, or one model for 100 points, depending on if you buy him the upgrade called Chief Apothecary, which I highly recommend. He is one of the best Space Marine units right now if you buy him the 30 points upgrade. He gives defensive bonuses to your infantry and biker units. He can heal them once a turn at the end of the movement phase for D3 wounds, but also he has an aura within 3, each model that would lose a wound each time a model from that unit would lose a wound, you roll a d6, and on a 6, the wound is not, not lost. So it's really good, but it's great against mortal wounds. He has two pistols, one of them is really great but has a really short range, range of 3, and the other one is okay pistol, better than the normal bolt pistol. But let's check out the real deal. If you buy him the upgrade, he will become the chief apothecary, which gives him the ability to heal twice in one round. That is cool, that is okay, but the real thing he unlocks or he get access to a cool warlord trait that you should definitely give to him called selfless healer. When he heals, instead of d3, he heals flat 3 wounds. That is still just okay, that's nice, but the real thing, there is a stratagem called combat revival when he can return a model to your units, infantry or biker. Well, if you have this warlord trait, this stratagem costs you 
zero command points, so you can resurrect a model in every turn for free, which is really great, not just because you return the model, but when you return a model, it has to be within one of his unit. So it's almost like a resurrection and a little bit of movement, or you can make your charge easier, reach a really near objective here, because you put the guy in front of the others, and things like that. I think you can use this really creatively. I have faith in you. I really like this combo, and I would give this unit a 9 out of 10 if you purchase the upgrade, which you should. The last one, Primaries Aggressors. 3 models, 90 points. While these models are great, they have some issues. Let's go to the good things. They are chunky. So they are really tanky, they have more wounds than a normal space marine, they have more toughness, so harder to kill. And they have a lot of shots. But also, they got nice melee weapons integrated into their body, power fist like. So they can hit really hard in melee. The bad things, they are slower than your average space marines. And they can be only be transported by repulsor executioner or repulsor tanks currently. About their shooting, you can choose between two types of main shooting weapons. One of them is a flamer, 12 inch range and d6 shots. So shots between 1 and 6. Not too reliable, can be really great, but can be really bad. But at least automatically hitting the target. So it's good against Eldar or things that have minuses to hit. The other one is a bolter, which has 3 shots, range of 18, other than that normal bolter. I prefer the bolter because they have flat 6 shots and better range, so more probable targets. I don't like the flamer because they can be really swingy. You can have just 2 shots or 12, so you can't really calculate with that. But other than these two, you can also give him freely a frag launcher, which I highly recommend because 3 shots, and it has the range of the bolter but with d6 shots, and the keyword of blast, so it's really good against big blob of enemies. I would really like to say something good about this unit, but it's mostly a slow infantry with a lot of shots and good-ish melee combat. It's not my cup of tea. I would give them a 5 or a 6 out of 10. Let's stick with the 6, because in some chapters they are really good, while in others they are completely useless. Overall score of this box set, 5 out of 10. Not because the units are horrible, because many of these units, except maybe the aggressors, are good, and useful. But this box set is boring, really boring. Mostly you have bolt shots, different amount, maybe a grenade or a sword. But the thing is, this set looks to me as a as a frame that you can build on, which is neat. But I don't think this box set in itself is going to motivate you to buy new things or try out new things, because I don't think many people will find something interesting in just shooting bolt rifle. A cool macroplasma incinerator or bikers would be much more interesting. You will only see the real value in this box set if you buy some boxes to it, like Hellblasters or ETC. So it's somewhat hard to say, but I think you should skip this box set. And if you really want to play Deathwatch, well then you should just buy another box set and buy the Deathwatch upgrade sprue. Sorry, but that's it. Or if you really really want to start Deathwatch, then I would recommend you the Deathwatch veteran kill teams, because it has many options, really good and customizable units, and after you finish the unit, you still have many more bits when you buy this box set or another box set that you can customize your guys and give them the real Deathwatch feeling, when we are brothers in arms, for the Imperium, and, and yeah, that cool Space Nice Commando feeling. But even if this box set sucks, the Deathwatch is still great. That's it for now. I would like to thank you for watching. Please give me a like or subscribe if you like what I do. Hit the little bell. Or if you don't hit the little bell, I'm going to upload a video probably on every Tuesday. That's it for now. See you in the next one.